Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 20th, and here in the Atlantic, uh, there's not that much to look at at the moment. Here's the wave axis from old 92L moving inland now over northern Mexico and southern Texas and bringing what looks like some light showers ashore here, bringing some very light drought relief hopefully to southeastern Texas, though they will need much more rain than this to actually uh, impact the drought there. We're going to be watching a couple of waves, specifically this one coming out of the Caribbean towards the northwest over the next few days. This one south of Hispaniola has a nice signature to it and is moving into an area where there's a a west-northwest flow aloft to the north of it, meaning it will have room to potentially do something in here over the next couple of days. We have high pressure building off the southeastern U.S., and as I mentioned in my last video a few days ago, uh, this kind of a pattern with enhanced easterlies coming into Florida and the Gulf of Mexico with tropical waves coming in from the southeast is a pattern that is unstable, uh, which means that these waves have a greater than normal chance to try to develop areas of low pressure in this area of the world here in this kind of a pattern. So although none of the models actually develop this right now. Um, I would keep an eye on this just warily as it comes northwest and we'll see if it tries to do anything in this area here. This is the European forecast for day four, showing a nice area of lowering pressures moving in the general direction of Texas here. So we might actually get another batch of showers to come ashore here in coastal Texas with this wave axis as it comes in here. So this could be more beneficial than anything, but at any rate, you can see the model showing, showing lowering pressures in the Western Gulf in a few days. So we will keep an eye on this wave just in case. Now in the rest of the Atlantic, we can see it's still pretty barren out here in the Eastern Atlantic and it's August 20th today. So we're really getting to the time of year now when we should be seeing hurricanes developing from these waves coming off Africa. This was Aaron that died out here due to all this stable air that exists. And uh, this is the one problem that really remains. Uh, notice that the trade winds out here are no longer very fast, very sluggish flow from east to west here. And that's a good thing for tropical development because uh, that means these waves have a better chance uh, to develop areas of low pressure. But you can see that there's no thunderstorms out here because the air has been sinking more than it has been rising and that may change as the MJO comes closer to our area of the world uh, but first of all these are the pressures so far this month in August and you can see how low they're getting one to two millibars below normal here over most of the tropical Atlantic this is what you want if you want a favorable environment for waves to develop and remember this is the opposite of what the European was showing for this uh, summer it was showing higher than normal pressures for the peak of the season which would have completely shut down this area and you might say well but it is shut down right now and it is for the moment, uh, but I think that's likely to change soon. Uh, we have the MJO coming towards the area of the world. This is the CFS week one forecast showing upward motion in green colors here over the Pacific and uh, orange colors indicate sinking air. And remember, this is what the MJO is, a global wave of rising and sinking air that moves from west to east across the tropics. So you see the green colors in the Pacific here, and this is where we've been getting a lot of storms in the central Pacific lately. They've had a massive burst with at least three depressions, two named storms during just the last week, and we're expecting one or two named storms in the eastern Pacific during the next week as this upward motion comes across. And then you would expect this to now propagate eastward towards the Atlantic, and indeed we see that by week two that uh, the CFS has this upward motion showing up in green over the Atlantic, and that stays here through week three and all the way into week four. So most of September here, the CFS has the MJO in a favorable position to enhance thunderstorm activity in the Atlantic and help these African waves actually start developing. And this is the European agreeing with the CFS here. And this phase plot uh, does nothing more than just tell you what the position of these green colors are, essentially. It tells you where the upward motion is because these phases, these are called octants, uh, one, two, and three, uh, correspond to the general area of the Atlantic here and Africa. So when you see the MJO in phases one, two, and three, it essentially means that there's a lot of upper motion in this area of the world. And so you can see the European uh, showing a nice signal in phases one and two, and then on into three as we get through September. And uh, this is the first time this year that the European has agreed strongly on something like this. And uh, once this comes through, um, it's likely to enhance the waves that are trying to come off Africa. This is the one that came off behind Aaron, Aaron an absolutely massive wave, uh, but it's a little bit too large for its own good. It will be coming west and might have to be watched later, but right now none of the models develop it. We have another wave coming off behind that one, and this is coming off farther south and might have a better chance to actually develop once it gets out over the water. But we'll have to keep an eye on that. And uh, you can see the, your, uh, the GFS ensembles now actually picking up 
on this uh, activity. By day 12 here, these are the ensemble members. Each red number indicates an area of low pressure that a GFS ensemble member is forecasting. And by day 12, we have one area north of the Antilles. That is this wave right here that I just showed you coming off Africa. So you can see the GFS trying to develop that north of the islands. It tries to develop the wave behind it, and it tries to develop the next wave behind that coming off Africa. So the models are seeing uh, this enhanced wave train coming off now and trying to develop almost every one of these waves as they come off of Africa beginning in about 10 days as we get towards the end of August here and into the first week of September. Uh, so the models are starting to see the pickup in, ac in activity and uh, we're not quite there yet with an imminent development threat but I think by about 10 days from now we're really going to see a ramp up in convection and active tropical waves in this area of the Atlantic and this is the time of year when we should start seeing hurricanes out here. It's starting to get a little bit late but I think the burst is coming right in time for the peak of the hurricane season in September and we should really see this area of the world light up possibly with multiple storms at a time in this area of the Atlantic here. So we'll keep an eye on that beginning in about 10 days we should really start to see this lighting up and we'll keep an eye on some of these waves in the western Atlantic as well. You can see how unstable the atmosphere is with all these random thunderstorms in here indicating that we'll have to keep an eye on some of these right now no imminent development forecasted by the models but we'll watch anyway and then we'll watch out here to see if any of these waves develop and potentially get far enough west to affect land later on all right that's it for today thanks for watching